to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. What song were you singing to start off today? <laughs> bang, bang into the room. I'm going to bang, bang all over you. Oh, boy. What is that? We're going to scoot, scoot. <laughs> We're going to skeet, skeet onto the floor. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> is that, that Jesse J? Yeah. Ah, big fan. Yeah. And a bunch of other gals. Oh, yeah. Isn't it the collab with like... Oh, Ariana, Ariana Grande, Grande a yeah. friend of ours, did the video. Yeah, 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 you're right. You're bang, right. bang, bang yeah. into the room. <laughs> We're going to skeet, skeet all over you. Why weren't you invited to join that power woman's trio? <laughs> Is it, uh, yeah, it's a trio or a, a four, a four, a four, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's four? Uh, a quattro. <laughs> a yeah. quad. A qua. Yeah, quad, a quattro. A quattro. Yeah, the, the old quattro. <laughs> Why weren't you asked to, 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 to join the quattro? The foursome. Yeah. The quattro. <laughs> um, yeah, don't know any of them. No, Can't no. sing. Okay. Can't dance. Well. Probably was pregnant. Yeah, yeah. When, when that came out or just any time? All the times. <laughs> bang, bang, all over you. I'm going to bang, bang. All into the, we go bang, bang into the room. Yeah, that's right? real good. It's really nice, Jay. Maybe if they do like a part do. Yeah, you get a nice tone. Then I could, yeah. Well, it's a vulnerable, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a vulnerable if they ever need a track that's like real. Raw. Raw, real, vulnerable, intense. You want to mm -hmm. feel the nerve endings. Is yep. Then you call you call the jails. Bang, bang into the room. <laughs> We're gonna skeet, skeet all over you. <laughs> We're gonna bounce, bounce, bounce on the bed. <laughs> We're gonna crash, crash into the wall. <laughs> Such a great tune, yeah. Such a nice little ditty. Such a nice little ditty. You know, every time I see the uh, a Monster Energy Drink logo, speaking of crashing into the wall, all I think of is Kyle punching holes through through drywall. Now. Oh yeah, I love it. The Kyle craze. Yeah, I don't know who started it, but one. I love yeah. it. Yeah, it's I a good really, one. Really, really love it. Yeah, it's specific and it's uh, descriptive. It with is one name, which is great. It's like the Chad, right? Yeah, <laughs> I love it. You just go, oh, uh, yeah, uh, Kyle. Yep, Kyle. I don't know too many Kyles now. I don't now. There was um, it's a it's like a dirt bike community thing. I know, so I've known a couple. I know one in my life. I know one. He, he, uh, I did a movie with a guy named Kyle Cease. He was well, his name doesn't have to actually. No, but it it, it should be Kyle. You know, okay, like, yeah. It, like, and uh, he was definitely not a monster punch a hole through a wall. He was the guy who was the slow clapper in a teen movie. You know? He could never oh, get it right. okay. Yeah. Right. Um, and that, that was the only Kyle, I think, that I had known and or grown up with. But do you know a Kyle that's like in the sense of the word? A yeah, Kyle. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. okay. I, I do, but like, right. let's face it. Um, Chads and Brads, I actually know Chads and Brads. Right, where it's that's just more like, your scene. Well, no, I actually, that, that's a real like, all right, cool. Um, Kyle might have been right behind us. I don't know. Oh, younger? Yeah, is that a, is that a? Probably, yeah. Or like the Kyles don't usually go to college. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Sure. I don't feel like they, um, not that they're dumb. Just mm. not really into that path. Yeah. And then it kind of gets too late. Okay. You know what I mean? They're either dirt bike riding or they've got a band that they're, you know, practicing with. Something else is going on at that time. They want to be young. They want to be free. Yeah. Yeah. And like, <laughs> and then it gets too late. Right. It and does. that's what I think kind of about 
we talk about this where we look at our friends and we're like, which one of us is doing it right? I don't know. Is it the ones that are single and, you know, no kids and they're just living the dream? It's like my friend got married, right? Second time in Ventura. Oh, that, did that happen already? That happened already. Okay. And all my friends that are single and don't have kids and aren't married, like traveled out there and they all lived it up, right? Yeah. And I go, gosh, how amazing to just be able to do that right now. But then I have to fast forward to them being 50-ish, yep. older, a little bit older, 52, 53, uh -huh. and having it, I need to remember that it won't be that cute and it won't be that fun and you won't be the fun It'll be great. gal that It'll gets be, to yeah, jet set. Very great gardens at that point. And they're great almost gardens. there now. We're older, so, you know, we're at, we're on the, we're millennial cuspers, right? Right, right. So it's the end of, <laughs> I am, okay? It's Here's, the end of it being, the very, very end of it being cute, I think. Past 35, it stops being cute. Where I think so, you're, yeah. You're like, hey, we're all done with this. Um, I went out uh, to celebrate the end of the book, right? So I flew to San Antonio uh, recorded with uh, Matt, Mr. Matt Best for his book, right. Thank You For My Service, which you can pre-order a signed copy now on thankyouformyservice.com. Or if you've already ordered on Amazon, just, you can just redeem the code on there for free and get the signed book. He knocked the audio book out of the park. Um, excited to see what the director chose and, and what he didn't choose in that when it comes out because we had a director for it and everything. And afterwards... We went out to, to celebrate, have a few drinks, you know, mm -hmm. met up with some people and then uh, met up with some other people that we know. Okay. Who met up with some people and then met up with some other people. Yeah. Uh -huh. Cause Matt, Matt, look, Matt and I are married. We keep it polite. We're just like, Hey, sure. It's a we're gonna go to a dive bar by, by the house. You went, you went boot. Jack. Yeah. We love the boot. That's jack. my jam. The best. Yeah, yeah. Love that bar. It's fantastic. They all know us in there. Right. It's fun. Like, uh, met up with some other people who, you know, uh-huh. I think you guys all know him probably, huh? <laughs> won't say it, won't say it. But you, we, I think we all as a group, everyone, know these people. Carry on. It was not cute. And my they're younger. My unmarried friends were not. It was not cute. And, uh, but they're like they're 35. They're younger though. Okay. They're not that young. Are they 35? Uh, yeah, right around that age. Okay. So only a couple of youngers. Couple years younger, a couple summers younger, and uh, <laughs> a couple you know, youngers. I, I was just like, "Oh no!" And I had conversations with them, right? So I broke it down of like, so it was what Sunday night? Yep. Monday night. Mm -hmm. Sunday night. Right? Sunday night. Yeah, yeah. So Sunday night. Because you came back Monday. I came, yeah, I came back Monday nights, and uh, you know. We had a, a lighter day on Monday that was easier, and uh, I only stayed out to like midnight. I didn't go hard, obviously, because we had a we had a call time. But I was just right. like, "Oh boy," the conversations and the things that they were stuck in, and it was a lot of exes who they were hanging around that were still fr that like they were still friends with each other and all this stuff. And I was like, "Oh man," and it's Sunday. Like this, you guys were meeting up on a Sunday night. Right. And did you leave them out? Yes. Okay. They continued. A hundred percent. Yeah. So, and you know, I, again, I mean, that's the thing you go uh, like part of you sometimes, right. When we're in the, in the routine of it, of our lives, you go, gosh, and we've said it to each other where it's like, I wish I could just fucking, I mean, you always say like, butt fuck a Big Mac and like drink a margarita yeah, 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 or whatever yeah, yeah. and yeah. sleep in like yeah. whatever. You just want one day of like, Dude, I just want to do whatever the fuck I want. Like those little dinglings, right? Sure. But here's what I found as time goes on. And, I, and I, I'm sh maybe the audience is, is the same way. And I'd be curious if they are because I think so. When you get to that certain age, right? Mid-30s. Sure. Where it is not cute anymore. Right. When you go into the town of your friends, typically before that... You would have stayed with them. Now you're looking at Airbnbs because yeah. their shit is is starting to become tragic, and you're like, "But that's hey, also, man. that's also the adult 
thing to do, I think. I always think it's kind of weird at a certain age to be crashing. If Unless you, they have a fucking If you have kids. Mansion. Yeah, but here's the thing. If you, yeah. if you have kids, I wouldn't do it, right? Wouldn't do Airbnb it. Airbnb it or get a hotel. Right. Um, if they have kids, if they have significant others, you just it's just the polite grown-up thing to do. Right. To kind of always take care of your own but here's lodging. The thing. If you have single friends at that age and they they're still like, they're, yeah. and they want to rage and you know yeah. on a Sunday where you're just like, all right, cool. And it's not the kind of raging that you're used to. Right. It's more of like, oh, some of these people are divorced. Some of these, you know, where you're mm-hmm. just like, yeah. Yeah. Is... It's not carefree. No. And that really goes out the window. So you're hearing problems of people that are going through like real life adult shit. And you're like, Man. life ruiner but stuff. But you're still yeah. out as if you're early 20s. Got it. Trying to make it all happen on a Sunday night. And you're like, got it. This got it. Is got it. Like, that, that's that's too much because even I'll, I'll like I'll be real with you even in my 20s right and as hard as I've gone my entire life even my 20s Sunday nights are still kind of sacred where it was like all right I need at least one night to recover from whatever the fuck I'm doing oh yeah I still and to this day and always have loved like an earlier Sunday supper with wine or and like like eat. a cookout with friends all day sure. Maybe go but to the pool, go to the beach, chill out, watch whatever chill, HBO yeah. Sunday show was on that was going to terrorize your mind. Yeah. And you were like, all right, great. Yeah. And yeah, it's not like that. But it's, it's, it's such a different world in the dating sense of it where, you know, I was asking some of my friends, I was like, man, what, why are you, why are you here? Why are you doing this? And they were like, ah, I'm sick of Tinder, you know, and I want to mm. meet somebody out. And I was like. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, Sunday night's probably not your best bet uh, for all yeah, of that. That's the, that shot at love. That's the graveyard shift. Yeah. That's the uh, B team. <laughs> C team. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, again, though, I do have to say, I do not know. And I don't know if I ever will. Uh, will we ever get the answer of who's doing it right? I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know if you will. I'm not sure. So there is no, from me, there is no judgment of that ever. It's always just like, dude, like, am I doing it right? Yeah, you'll never know. I'll never know. Did you or f- are they doing it right? Are they envious of me or am I just envious of them? Or is this, I don't know. Did your friends have fun at the second wedding? Yes. Okay. And I did have a moment. I had a couple, you know, I'm very nostalgic. So yeah. I did have a couple, you know, I, it was a day. Definitely of like a nostalgic thing of like my friends are all in one place and I'm you, you weren't. Yeah, you're not there. Yeah, and I'm not there, although I only wanted to be there for that night and where I live. That's impossible. Right. So you have to go in. You have to do the like hang out the night before go to the wedding, do the like brunch thing the next day. Like yeah. all of that would have been way too much for me. I would have gotten into the depressing part of it. Right. (laughs) But just that one night with all of our old friends, like, oh, my God. And like we have a picture from her first wedding 10 years ago. No, no, no. Of all of us together. And it it is in bad taste. But I said to my friend, I was like, do we take like a 10 years later, like second wedding photo? So, you knew that that the first marriage wasn't going to last. No, I didn't know they had been together like all of high school, they were like first boyfriend and girlfriend. They were together for like four or five years before I even met them. I went to their wedding. They were together 10 years after that. Do you know what I mean? Like I lived with them. It was just, I didn't like my other friend is still dealing with the breakup. Like it was our parents. It, they were the only ones that were, do you have people like this where they were to, they were just always together. It's kind of like Tristan and summer. You'd be like, no, I only know you together. You cannot. Like, you were like my... Yeah, I, you know... My shining example of, like, what it is. I mean, did I love their relationship together? I've Not been, really, I've, but I've they were perfect. I've a few friends from high school who were still together from high school, right? And... Right. They're, re- like, uh, three. I know three different couples Jeez. who dated from high school, still together, and extremely happy. Where you're just like, oh, shit. Okay. That's pretty amazing. 
So this is a testament to like where I'm from, which is it's California. So being together and staying together and not cheating on each other and like for that long mm-hmm. and just seemingly like getting along for that long to us was like so foreign. Right. Right. Very alien only because they're all still single. I'm the only one. But it was way later to like, you know, get out kids, whatever. So. It's it's very weird um, that they were broken up, but and the wedding wasn't to go to the wedding. It was just to be to reminisce, to look at that picture and be like, oh, my God, we're all here again. Right. How different we look like and looking at that picture. And it's all the same people around the table except for me. <clears throat> well, look, and, me and-, and I'm OK with not going. I'm just saying like I had a moment of that. Right. Yeah. And I'm sure you would, too, if you see all of your like college friends or those besties or whatever we made together. Pact. We made a pact a Not at a wedding, ago. but if you saw them anywhere, right? At a table, all the same people all together that you have that one picture and you were the only one not there. No matter what the event was, I'm sure you would have a twinge because yeah. you're not a monster. Am I right? You'd have a twinge of, oh, man. Uh, no, 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 for like, sure. For sure. Like what, like last year when I saw people raging at, at Buckeye games, I was like, oh, man. Right. And it was all your friend, like yeah, all of your friends together. And we got sent together. to, we're out of town. Yeah. At Ohio State, ironically. So, you know. But, but we also, as dudes, made a pact of like, hey, man, no second marriages. You, you're don't, you don't come. Or yeah. Don't invite me like that. There's no obligation. Here's the only thing with that. None of our other friends have gotten married. So there are two marriages. You know what I mean? Or like, no way. So, so it's the only like, two weddings for you. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> we had one and like you and I, you know, shotgun. So like those were the two times that we would, we don't have a bunch of pictures of us all at weddings, right? Because this was our only friends that like got married. Well, you and I just wanted to do friends. I mean, uh, family. And totally. That was it. And, and like that yeah, was yeah. still, by the way, the greatest decision of all time. Oh, and I think that anyone would be envious of that. That ha- that does a bigger go, wedding. Go through a huge wedding and then tell me about it. Totally. No, it's, it's, it's exactly how I wanted to do it. But uh, yeah, so that was the thing with that is we don't have a bunch. Of, you guys all got married. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. We have one person that keeps getting, we need her to get married again. <laughs> So that we can have like weddings to get together for <laughs> fucking California, dude. Oh, what do I say? I don't know. Uh, no, you don't say anything. <laughs> you know, uh, if I had younger friends here. Oh, I've been to a wedding of a friend out here. Yeah. Younger, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I don't get to go. I haven't gone. No. You guys went to all the friends weddings. You know, I, I went to two. That was it. The rest of it, the rest of I was, I was working. I was shooting movies and stuff, so like I, I just couldn't make it. Well, that's a major, like that's a friendship. Fuck, even my best ender. best friend last year. Yeah, I know. I mean, I it's a really to, big deal. I was supposed to do the wet, like announce the wedding, do the vows, all that stuff, and I was like, man, I gotta go to this thing. Like, I'm yeah. sorry, I can't do it. I haven't been to a a wedding of like a like a you know one of my best friends. Mm-hmm. Man, maybe since right out of college. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, it's not that I'm terrible about it. It's just, look, you go you so are. far out no, of you your are. way. It's not that. No, you are in that you working and building what you're building right now and for a while has been really, really important. And the most important thing. It is, As yes. it should be. Yeah. But at some point they make tons of movies about this at some point we have to right put a little bit more importance on i think we're out of it i don't have just any friends in general you no, know no, no, relationships no. in general showing up to people's things I, but i did that like needs the, to be important I, and i just did that with uh, with tristan so, you know, yes. just went Yes, there. and so more into, things. I flew into Cleveland, Ohio. More things like that. Uh, yeah, yes. But, Which we uh, don't have time for right now, but it, that's the goal. Like, f- right? The goal is not necessarily like a shit ton of money. The goal is to have time. Well, shit ton of money provides time. So, exactly. Yeah. But you're not only looking at the dollars. You're looking at what that gives you, right? Which yeah. is time. Yeah, time. 
It's always time. Whether it's to yourself, time to yourself, time to do whatever you want, time with people that. Are you going to take time for yourself today? Because this is your day. This is Bourdain Day. You want to tell the peeps at home? If you're watching Happy. the video show, subscribe on YouTube. Jesse's got the bus. I made that Maybe bus for you. That's why I'm being you. so emo I today, it. huh? I bought it. Yeah. That's you are I'm a being... little down today. No, I'm just like. Was this his birthday? No, or was I'm this just the day like introspective today. It's his birthday. Okay. Yeah. The day he hung himself. No, I don't think that would be the day of celebration. Um, it is his <laughs> birthday, but. Oh, so gosh. today's his birthday. Okay. Yeah. And Anthony Bourdain Day. So now it's the first year that what? What are you looking? What are you looking up? What are you gonna say? No. I, what do you want to say? I, just <laughs> you continue your story. Oh, okay. Um, that's maybe why I'm second. being so emo today and so like introspective and also thinking about things that really matter, right? I don't know. You know what I find odd about Bourdain Day? Yeah. Is something else major happened on this day. From So, so Bourdain's your most beloved guy, yep. right? Of all time. Your most hated guy is probably... Michael Jackson. Correct. And he died today? <laughs> or him and Farrah Fawcett or what? Today was the day he died. Today of the day was... 10th we, anniversary. I like to think of it as the day Farrah Fawcett died. And then <laughs> I kind of go, oh, and that other guy died too. Um, so, yeah. and uh, R.I.P. Farrah Fawcett. Yeah. 10th anniversary of for that. Michael Jackson's death. Thanks for that. So they did this piece on Today Show. About Michael which Jackson? I don't know if they would do with any other person that... Was it Bourdain or Michael Jackson? Michael Jackson. Um, really? Today? Yeah. And they were kind of... The whole point of the piece was sort of how to grapple with separating the man from the art. Mm. And the fact that they were even trying to have that conversation... You know? Triggered me. <laughs> yeah. Somebody else brought that up as well. It was uh, Helen Mirren. And uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, Judy Dench. I always get the two of them confused. Dame, Dame, Judy Dench, Dame Jesse Wiseman. Yeah. So she was saying, look about Weinstein and Kevin Spacey. Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to say. Same regard. Is... She was like, look, are, are we just done? A, this is her exact quote. Are we just not going to go see all of these films because these people were associated with all right. these great films? Right. And separating the art from all of it. For Michael Jackson, I cannot. I, mine's a case-by-case -case basis, and I'm totally dead serious. Because, I mean, since we're speaking about that, Louis C.K. performed last night. And, and has been. It but, was a, yeah. but last night was a big event, and it was a fucking standing ovation for, like, ever. And I was like, oh, people are really done with that. And, you know, the more and more people I talk to about that, dead serious. Like, comedy-wise, uh, like Hollywood-wise, on the side are like... Hey, man, since we've had all these stories and all this fucked up shit has happened, right? With Michael Jackson and Weinstein right, and right. all of that. If you really look at it, was jacking off in front of people the lowest of it that I could forgive the fastest? And everybody's kind of said the same thing behind the scenes of like, eh, Louis yeah, I can get over it because he was just jacking off in front of people. He never raped anybody. The never. other thing about him, too, is an immediate admission. So the he was people the only one that yes. we can't, yeah, yes. the people that we can't forgive are the ones that lie and tell the, and say that the victims are lying and fuck with them for even longer. You know what I mean? Yeah. Those are the people that's like, fuck you. Right. Yeah. But he pretty immediately, he did not deny any of it. No. I mean, he was just like, this is why I did it. And I'm sorry. And it was the next day. Yep. He released that statement. So. So I think that is probably part of it. I don't know, but with Michael Jackson, I, I'm I'm that documentary, and this doesn't happen to me too often. I really don't give a shit about things. That one was that one was just so much. Uh, it was so graphic. Where it I'm really like, got to you, possibly a lot more than it got to me, only because I felt like I was just like, yeah, I know. So for me, the whole time I was like, yeah, obviously, obviously. I, well, I I still had thought. That there was a shot that some of these people were trying to get cash right. out of him, right? And so I didn't had kids. have that. Yeah. Because he had kids. Right. And right. to me, right. if you have kids, 
I don't know how you could do this other fucked up shit. So for that, I was like, ah, I was still entertaining the possibility, right? right? And I wasn't. And then after the documentary, I was like, nah, we're, we're all good. We're good. With the end of that. There was too many, what was it, 27 people or whatever the fuck it was. And um, all the descriptions were like identical. And it was, it, was cra- it was crazy. Like the exact dates, times, all that stuff. And I'm like, I'm, I'm done with Michael Jackson, me personally. Uh, the, the Weinstein thing with, with the, what Dame Judy Dench said with mm-hmm. all of them, uh, is a little different for me. Um, probably for the fact of Harvey Weinstein wasn't starring in these movies. So mm-hmm. if, if one of his flicks comes on like, like Good Will Hunting is a perfect example. I don't think of Harvey Weinstein. I really don't. And so yeah, I, no. I'll see the logo at the end and be like, yeah. oh, fuck, it's right. Those guys did this movie. Um, yeah. But I, I don't look at that movie. He didn't star in these things to me. So it's just like, all right, cool. Kevin Spacey, when I see that, I had already known about Kevin Spacey. I didn't know that he had tried to do it with fucking 14 year old boys and shit like that. But yeah, that, that would be a tough one to struggle with if Kevin St- Spacey just popped up and shit again. You were like, Ah. Yeah, that would be a rough one. And then if so, again, case by case basis, I look at Aziz Ansari, and that's not even a real one. No, we to me it, it was bad sex. The, and, no, we yep. can't even put him in the category. I will yeah. not. But um, the Chris Harvey Hardwick Weinstein, thing. I saw. I, guess I saw is, Chris Hardwick hosting a game show the other night. Started to cut you off. Well, because that is that was proven to be crazy X. So but he has, still. It, it was so out there and it was such a detailed essay that this girl had written that that shit kind of lives with you and if you don't know right. the real story didn't take the time to follow it then it's just like oh, all right cool um you know I, I'm, I was happy to see him back doing shit but uh, yeah yeah man I, I I don't know uh but I, I'm I, I stand with you on the MJ thing I'm 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 all done with that I'm done with it but like I've said before I'm not telling you never started it <laughs> I exactly. I never loved it, but I also am not telling other people not to. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that's that's all all up to you, and you all the hate. I'll take all the hate from it. All I'm asking is for you to watch it. That's all. That's all. With an open mind. Yeah. And if you do, and you still are like, mm, I don't know, keep it up. Or if you do, and you're like, I still like his music. Go ahead. Go ahead. Who the fuck am I to cancel Michael Jackson, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, but the other thing about the Today Show thing was I thought, what if, what if it was Helen Mirren on here talking about Harvey Weinstein? I don't know if it would go down as, as pleasantly. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I don't think people would be into her trying to say, hey, can we separate the man from the art? Hell no. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so it was weird to see on today's show them saying that about him because that's admitting that they believe it, but then also saying we need to separate it. So I, I, it just felt like it was a Michael Jackson only that they were able to do that with. And that if again, if Helen Mirren was on there doing a piece was like, let's let's still watch Harvey Weinstein movies, they'd be like, Psh, Bye. See ya. Right? See ya. So it felt kind of weird. Maybe just because I hate him so fucking much. Maybe. Um, and by the way, uh, there's a couple of things I wanted to shore up here that have happened recently. Uh, some people hit me up and they were like, hey, man, I saw you on Graham Allen's show the other day. Um, yes, I was on Graham Allen's show uh, specifically for conservatives who are being targeted before the election. They're starting to flag the videos or take down the content. And it's happening more and more. I was with uh, Crash Talk. I got to see Crispy over the weekend. Um, oh, nice. Who got that picture taken down with uh, Donald Trump Jr. Yeah, yeah. And we took a picture, and I jokingly put a post up on Instagram. Uh, at ST James. ST James. Down, I says, yeah. the reason I love taking pictures with Crispy is they'll probably be taken down. Right. And um, uh, Graham had hit me up and said, hey, man, would you mind coming on my show and t- telling what happened uh, on Drinking Bros? Our YouTube channel, we've created a media company is combined now. So if you go on to YouTube and subscribe, it's Ross Patterson Revolution and Drinking Bros Podcast combined. We had one video flagged last month, and it was Graham's. It was probably the tamest episode we've done. And yeah, he doesn't curse. He doesn't, he curse doesn't talk at, yeah. at all. And uh, 
uh, Christian, great dude, family man, like doesn't curse at all. That video got flagged for content by YouTube. And I thought it was strange. And I reached out to him and I said, hey, man, because I, I knew he was going through some problems with Instagram. And I go, just so you know, man, we had a porn star on. Right. We had a literal porn star on our show. You know, what, a week prior or whatever it was, that that didn't get flagged. And uh, but yours did. Mm. And we talked about some of the most graphic shit on the planet. And it was like, Jesus Christ. Yes, it's happening. And uh, right now, uh, you uh, Google got popped. Um, so that that guy who does that Project Veritas shit, Google owns YouTube and everything else um, that said there is a plan in place to deal to prevent the Trump situation is what they're calling it in 2020. And the Trump situation is by manipulating algorithms so that he, he can't go out to as many people. People who are chatting to them can't go out to as many people. And it all was on video, right? And that, this guy, that guy, James O'Keefe, uh, who's truthfully, I, I think, a piece of shit, but right. whatever, man. Mm-hmm. He goes undercover and he does all these fucking videos and he gets these executives or politicians or things to admit what's really going on behind the scenes. He, he was pretty famous for the Van Jones video at CNN about two years ago where he caught Van Jones on a street corner in New York City, kind of befriended him. They were out in public, so it wasn't like he was in his house. It was mm-hmm. the middle of the afternoon. And he goes, hey, man, I'm just curious what you think about this whole Trump-Russia situation. And Van Jones was just like, man, to be honest, this, this whole thing's a, a big, fat nothing burger. Yeah. Just absolutely nothing. Yeah. And their CNN's just try to drag this out. Now, that was a CNN correspondent talking about it, you know, two and a half years ago. This, it kind of made this guy, James O'Keefe, you know, and then right. he started doing it to other people and mm-hmm. all this other shit. And uh, he, the latest one was Google. And he got some Google execs uh, to admit what was going on. And uh, he said that they're manipulating the, the Google execs were, are manipulating the algorithm so that uh, you're going to see less in him and, and less of people on the right and things like that. And it's. To me, you know, I hit up Graham and I was like, man, I have no other explanation for this than, than that. Yeah. I really don't. Yeah. Graham's numbers are fucking huge. Yeah. He's, I, I think his podcast in politics is like number 23 in the world. Our, it, it, and, uh, so why is it flagged when it comes, when he comes on our show? Be, because of his name. So as soon as the name is oh, out there, oh, oh. like, hey, special guest Graham mm-hmm. Allen, it's, it's, it's an automatic flag. Right. And I'm assuming... Like the rest of these guys who are having this, because there's a lot of people who are having this problem right now. Um, I'm assuming it's the same thing. And I'm like, man, I, I, I tried to think about it from the standpoint of, I understand why Google t- does it. Like, you know, first of all, they want to break up Google and Facebook and all that shit because it's become too big and they don't pay any taxes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Amazon and those guys, they don't pay any taxes, right? Um, and they've created virtually a monopoly in these those uh, apple too like these these four or five companies have created this monopoly that there's nothing you can really do about and uh trump wants to break that up and have them pay taxes bring more jobs to america blah 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 uh that, but they also hate him and they don't want him as president right right this is we're what three days away from the ele- from the the debates for the Democrats, like yep. the election is starting in three days. I mean, really, really starting in three days. Knives are going to be out and it's going to be fucking brutal. The problem with this is, yes, you can silence all these voices all you want, right? I, I think quietly behind the scenes, it's only going to build more and more of his base to be like, hey, man, we're being shut out of all this shit. Fuck everybody. The polls right now are so far off and so mind altering that I, I, I don't believe any of this stuff. Like I really don't. And I hate to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but like we've gotten a taste of it now a little bit on the inside here with having friends get flagged and content getting flagged. I think it's totally true. And I think it's totally real. The problem with it is if you block all of this shit, it's going to shut out people. I think on the, left or, or Democrats who feel too confident and, oh, it's the same thing in 2016. Well, mm-hmm. We don't really have to go out and vote. Yeah. It really doesn't matter. Yeah. Nobody's talking about it. The corporate media is, has gone silent on this whole thing. They're, no one's reporting it. That's why I wanted to talk about it today. But uh, 
man, with all of this happening, I think you're just setting yourself up for another 2016 sitch where it's like, all right, great. All the polls right now have Biden ahead by like 15 points. Over yeah. Time. What? We don't even know who's going to win out of that, that primary on that side. Like, let alone you're saying Trump's behind eight people right now in the polls on all these polls and you're pulling all these people's shit who are even remotely trying to talk about it. I, I think you're just setting yourself up for the same situation you mm-hmm. had in 2016. That's my personal feeling on it. Uh, I don't know if you, if you feel the same way, but uh, man, uh, it, it is real and it is happening for sure. Um, and then they, you know, they've got the Trump slump that's happening where there hasn't been really a lot to talk about behind the scenes oh yeah because nothing has really shook out or been crazy or you know the Kavanaugh thing is over everything else is over so these ratings keep going down on on cable and they don't know what to do the because Trump there is no other slunk. story that's what they're calling it and it makes total sense total sense and they don't know what to talk about now that he's not really going through any controversy right now they and he's, keep bringing up the impeachment thing, and you're just like, dude. But and even Democrats are like, dude, we're not going to do that. No, and, <laughs> and it's, the, it's and the uh, media keeps going. So let's talk about the I word. And they're yeah. just like, dude, like we're not going to. Here's how you get someone out of office. <laughs> you just go in and vote. You vote, and that's it. Um, we're not going to go through that. And by the way, impeachment doesn't get him out. No. It just, it's just it, a trial. It, it's and it's a crazy long legal process. Remember, exactly that Bill stops Clinton him from doing anything. Forever, exactly. And he was, dude, he was out of office at, at that point. Exactly. It was just like, so it who gives a shit? I think people are confused in that, and and media actually talked about this. We're like, I think a Democrat even said this. Like, I think people are confused that they they actually think impeachment means he's gone. Right. That just means get him out of there. Yeah. It doesn't no. at all. It's just another fucking bullshit, you know, trial. It's just another trial. So, I, look, with all of this happening, you're in three days, you're going to be stuck because he doesn't have to do anything anymore, right? For the next year, their Democrats are going against each other. Yeah. And, and then you're stuck because then you have to report what's, what's going on in the Democratic Party. There's nothing really you can report about Trump unless we go to war with Iran or something. Mm-hmm. That's kind of it, you know, unless the economy starts to tank or whatever. Like, eh, what else is there? There's nothing really going on. You know, there's not really any controversies going on. Nip slip. Who? Trump. Trump. Trump slump. (laughs) Nip slip. I thought we were going to have a nip slip by you. You were, you were, yeah, yeah. No, nobody wants that. I promise. Everybody wants that. Not yet. I think our ratings would rise, <laughs> James. Hey, Hi-o. talk about the Trump slump. Hi-o. Tell you what we can do about it. Yeah. Couple of nip slips. Why don't you uh... pull out my ding dong? <laughs> no, your nip. Oh, nah, my, I'll go dong. I'll go full dong out. Uh, oh, if you're cool, having nip slips cool. at home or dongs out, why don't you do it on a ghost bed by ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. We're going to bang, bang into the room. Yeah. We're going to skeet, bang. skeet all oh, over you. Wow. That's a lot, James. We're going to jump, jump, jump on the bed. Yeah. Lux. I think uh, ghost bed will love that song. I really think so. I think they're going to connect with it. So, they're, they're a bunch of cool cats, huh? They are. They're, they're rad. Ghostbed.com forward slash Shringer Bros. They're always giving away free shit. We always talk about it. This month was the, uh, the cooling cover uh, slash protective cover for the bed, mm-hmm. which is awesome. Uh, sometimes it's free pillows. Sometimes it's free sheets. The sheets I, are amazing, too. Because we, we just ordered uh, t- uh, three uh, bunk beds for the office, right? Yeah. And uh, they just showed up, put a picture on my Instagram and, and all that stuff. And I was just shouting out ghost bed, praising their names. And I went to tag them and put the thing in there. Their website popped up. There's a little tiny wheel of fortune where you can spin it and then get something for free on there. What? Yeah. So if you go to ghostbed.com forward slash string and bros today, do that. And they've got 4th of July sales that are off the chain. Uh, that, and that bundle package is still there at 7 dollars I don't know how. That is a fucking monster savings, dude. Seriously. You get the adjustable base with USB ports, flashlights, all that shit. Uh, and it just sort it's remote control. So you're up and down like like Snoop Dogg's car. Oh, dude. It's nice. 
Uh, go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today to get your mattress, pillows, or other needs. It comes super fast. Yeah, yeah really fast. It's like three <laughs> like, days. I'm going to say faster than the other guys from what I've heard. It does. Yeah, yeah. Um, and 36 months, no interest, pay as you go program. Nobody's doing that. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Next up, we got strikeforceenergy.com. Shabloinkers. Yeah. Shabloinks. She gonna bloink, bloink. Yeah. Into the room. I was at a bar in Texas and somebody had a strike force behind the counter. What? Yeah. Bottle or the boxes? Bottle. That's 750 bottle. milliliter bottle. San Antonio is a big military town. So they were like, man, everybody kept asking for this, but finally just put one in the bar. Smart. I know. Uh, pop a couple squirts in and go. So we had it. Uh, I put a little grape in there. I made America grape again. Uh, they got lemon, grape, orange, and orange. Orange. Orange and orange? Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. Orange. Okay. Duck a orange. Orange for you dummies out there. Yeah. 10 pack, 40 pack, 750 milliliter bottle. No carbs and no sugars. And that is important in this life, especially because it's bikini season. In the summer of Swayze season. Is it? Um, go to strikeforceenergy.com. Type in the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. They also have a subscription of the month club. By the way, can we, can we see this here? This is summer of Swayze? Uh, Boom. Summer yeah, you of Swayze can see it. Tease? Porch, yeah. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, Jamie? Go to the side, I feel like, from the... There you... Oh, oh. okay. All right. Oh. Bang, bang. Yeah, Summer Swayze The tees. hair is exactly the same. I know. It's Boom. so fucking I'm weird. In it. This, this is the greatest shirt of all time. Buttersoft tri-blend t-shirt. Uh, these are back in stock. They sold out in like a half hour. So uh, they're back so in stock. Good. And uh, you can get it in like three days. So go to ledbyiron.com. Buy some Summer Swayze t-shirts. This is the greatest shirt I've ever owned. This is the most comfortable shirt I've ever I owned. I love it. Yeah, I'm super stoked. Uh, ledbyiron.com L-E-D-B-Y-I-R-O-N.com Order your summer of Swayze t-shirts We're just doing a limited batch again um, we, we put some more back in Because the last one sold out really quick um, But uh, yeah, yeah mine just came just keep doing smaller batches until Mine came a couple days ago And I was just like Yo dude This is the greatest fucking t-shirt ever awesome. So uh, I'm stoked I'm stoked. Uh, last but not least, we got straightrazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Oh, you're right. <laughs> 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 yeah, you can't it, even get it out. I can't. No. No, you couldn't even get uh, it. Oh, boy. Sm- sig no sm- one needs to hear that. Sig smoking. Oof. That's right. You were smoking cigarettes. I last had night. a cig. I'm a mom. You fucking loser. I fucking go out sometimes, and I want to feel alive. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I hear you. You know, it's the only way. I met up with you, you gals, last night when I got off the plane, and uh, yeah, you were my. Three of you guys were smoking cigarettes. You're my like, Uber. Yeah, I was my your, your, husband Uber. Your Uber driver last night. <laughs> Uber. Uber. Uh, straightrazors.com though was our sponsor that we need to discuss. Oh yes, chat about in this life. Straightrazors.com's got everything you need to be a real man. Uh, beard oils, mustache waxes, shampoos, conditioners, shaving products. Their straight razors are second to none. Their safety razors are real smooth. Go to straightrazors.com. Say with the promo code Revolution for twenty percent off. Yeah, so I show up. Um, I love that bar by the way. Oh, my God. Satellite. That whole area, it's just... It's great. They figured it out. They put a fucking movie screen in the back of it, yeah. which is awesome. It is awesome, although... The movies they were playing were... I, was, I went back out there because I, I went to grab you. I, my flight was late. Big shock. And uh, there were storms in Atlanta. In Atlanta? Oh, fucking airport, man. Mm. Um, I grew up there, too, and I hate that goddamn place. Anywho's. Um, there was storms in Atlanta, so I was late, and you were like, hey, I'm going to be out. You want to come grab me? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll come down and grab you for a drink. Just the three of you ladies outside smoking. Yeah. Uh, movie on Low out wine. back. I, I, I stepped around out back. It was about Dream 10 or 15 scenario. people watching this movie on a, on a yeah. Monday night. Not bad. And I was like, hey, I, it looked like Paul Walker. 
And I was like, hey, man, is that, is that Paul Walker? Is this Fast and the Furious? And the guy, there was two dudes who were just sitting there, and they go, yeah, seven. And I was like, oh, Fast and Furious, Fast and Furious seven. seven is what you wanted yeah. to put on for the movie of the week? Yeah, it was loud as shit. We were just like, what the fuck is going on back there? Yeah, Paul Walker, man. Fast and Furious 7, bro. Come on. No need for that nonsense. No. At all. On a Monday? No. I didn't, Anyways, I, I didn't yeah. Need to hear it, but, but you ladies were out there smoking cigs, enjoying your best lives, you know? Yeah, it was a, it was a dream scenario. Rapping. Just rapping about rapping life. Rapping about life. Getting uh, through it. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know who else is getting through life is uh, Tori Spelling's husband. I don't. Oh this, gosh, that little doofer, doofer. Did you hear the latest? Doofus. Yeah. What's did you hear, up? Did you hear the latest? What's up? Come on. I didn't. Are you being serious? I'm serious. What's up? He said he he once performed oral sex on a male friend of his. Gosh, now that's <laughs> widely known. <laughs> when he he was always had a ten. He says ten. Yeah. Why would he say that? I don't know. Gosh, they're like the they're like the spideys. And whenever they feel themselves like which, yeah. dropping in Gosh. in the fame, you know, they see their name on what is what are the rankings with that? Would it be IMDb? Yeah. They see the rankings yeah, go yeah, down, yeah, yeah, they yeah. they pull out some shit that no one ever asked to hear. No one ever asked you what happened. No. What's no. up? So is there anything that happened in your childhood? Never. No one. So he was talking to uh Jay Moore about it. And uh, oh, was it like a podcast or something? Yeah, it was a podcast. I, I guess Does it's a podcast one? called Daddy Issues. Oh, uh, yeah, gosh, great name. Um, episode three, Real Talk with Jay Moore. So he was sitting down with Jay Moore and he said, Yeah, you and I both, we, we, we both blew our friend when we were younger. I guess Jay Moore had done it too. You and I both, is that a thing? He said, I had sucked a dick in my life or five. So that's one thing we have in common. Who said or a five? Tori Spelling's yeah. husband? Yeah. So. I don't know. I, I, like, it, that, that's a curious one to me. Sucked a dick or five. So, like, you've, you're going past just, like, trying this out. At right. This point. Like, you five, five it. dicks is, you liked is, it. is a lot. Uh, he also said that he, his kids have walked in on him and Tori Spelling having sex together. So. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. What do you want? What do you want? I like the <laughs> I like the the time that, that that homeboy posted a pic of uh himself with like Tori Spelling. She was breastfeeding in the background. Yeah. Pop that up on Instagram on accident. Yeah. He's just a big doofus. She's back. Um like looks wise. They're doing the fucking oh. 90210 yeah. reboot. So And she sheds weight when she needs to. And yeah. I want to know how. How she's doing it. I don't because know. She, they, they have like 90 kids. so Right. So is it just running after them? Is it Adderall? Is it? The, the weight thing for her, I, like I'll give her a, you know, you give her a pass on this. She's pregnant every fucking two minutes. No, so. I know. But the, the amount of time that it takes her to shed, like get down to like super skinny is yeah. crazy. Because you'll see her when she's big after having a baby, and you're like, that's never, I mean, you are, that's you. Five kids. It's really hard to look at. Five kids yeah, I have. Yeah, that's yeah, That's a lot. It is a lot, and it's too much. Imagine for LA, too. Jeez. And also, if you're not doing great, that, that little doofus, <laughs> you know, he doesn't, he does like a couple cooking show things every once in a while, and she, I mean, she obviously is good. But and they have this like weird hotel in the middle of nowhere that they kind of. What do they do at the know. hotel? Uh, they did a reality show about it, but it was it was basically like a bed and breakfast that they like revamped and they run. I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna come out and say something that's gonna be controversial right now. Old school nine hundred two one zero. Sure. The hottest one for me was Tori Spelling. Shut up. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. Why? Uh, I didn't think homegirl with the eye, Shannon Doherty, never got down on her. I didn't really either. Andrea Zuckerman was way out for me. Like that sure. was, she was out of it. 
right? Sure, she was 45, yeah. Then you're down to Jenny Garth. I thought Jenny Garth was... She's cute. No, I didn't actually... Okay. She's cute, but it, it was like... She's cute, you know? But Tori Spelling was like, she already had a, you know, the fake rig, the whole thing. Like, that was... Fake, she looked more of a... Fake rig? What's yeah, that? fake tits. Okay. She had a fake rig on her. So uh-huh. that was kind of the one where we were like, eh, all right. And then when Tiffany Amber Thiessen joined later, obviously that I mean, switched, obviously. but that was way later. I'm talking about original cast. Tori Spelling was 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 the one. What about you? Out of the guys, the guys were you had better options. You oh. had David Silver, you had I, oh Ian Ziering, you had Jason Priestley. You had so Luke Jason Perry. Priestley was hands down the hottest. Like my really, I thought I would have Luke Perry. I think, and everyone did, and I never got. It. I think he was too skinny for me. Like ah. I never find like skinny lanky guys. Right, right. Super hot. So I was always like, he's the bad boy. Like, put so a little Priestley was your Priestley. Okay. Yeah. Tori Spelling was yeah. our uh, Jenny Garth was probably the hottest looks, you know, like the cutest looks wise. Classically. Yeah. But, but she kinda, had that thin, thin, wispy hair. Yeah. Just kind of boring. That she to kept me. long. That would just. Whew. Yep. Yes. Yeah, so we lean, we always lean toward Tori Spelling where it was like, all right. What you say? We like me and my friends you and your friends. Yeah, yeah, all yeah. of you. Yeah. Wow, yeah. this is It was a little opening. group of us, and it was like, hey, man. A group of you? Yeah, probably about five. There was five of us who leaned that direction. The horse face didn't deter you guys? or It, it's, uh, it was a, a combo of factors that went into it. We also knew that it was Aaron Spelling's daughter, so it was like, you know, you saw the pictures of Aaron Spelling's house. You got caught up in that, and then she had the fake rig, and then the Gosh, fake lips, and all that other shit. The rig and you were like, thing, all right. I can't do that one anymore but um <laughs> rig. yeah uh so tori spelling was uh gosh eye-opening i mean this is really i did not know this about you yeah we're laying it all and out there your today. friends yeah wow yes yeah, so that was it you know so when who I, I thought s- i was thinking the other day 21 jump street okay you would think johnny depp yeah, but we, it was actually the other one you were going greco on that one huh no you weren't going Richard Grieco? No. I oh, was you're going, going the other like, guy? The bigger, you never see him ever again, right? No. no, you don't. Bigger a little bit. That's my jam. Okay. Li- not fat. Sure. But like a little bit. Like Brendan Fraser. Like Brendan Fraser. Yeah. Cradled by a giant. Yes. Who doesn't want to be? No, I get it. I get it. I need to find his name so you continue. No, I, it's one of those names where I won't, I won't know. No, I just need to find his name just... To say it, because you know who I'm talking about. Everyone knows who I'm talking about. There's the three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bigger face. I know. I know exactly okay, what you're talking so about. Okay, so I'm Longer saying I just hair, need he, to find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he didn't really do anything after that. So no. Yeah. And I was thinking, I saw a picture the other day, and I was like, oh my god, like he was never in anything else. No. Um, do you want to tell the audience what what's uh, what you what the present I gave you over the weekend on Instagram? Oh my God! Do I? I think I should say this, Peter DeLuise. Oh, Peter DeLuise. DeLuise. Yes. You know, he actually comes Did from not a really age. Well, he, he comes from a really famous family. Really, Dom DeLuise was his dad. Okay, that makes sense. And then the whole there was another brother DeLuise, and anyways, yeah. he was my perfect. That was your dude. Okay. Body type, guy, everything. Sure. Everything. Um. So. Oh, if anybody saw on Ross Patterson Revolution. The Instagram account. The Instagram. Uh, or the Facebook page. I put it on Facebook Oh, you as put well. on Facebook page did, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's my old acting coach. <laughs> who was the dad in Field of Dreams. Dwyer Brown. Who is the dad in Field of Dreams. Want to have a catch. <laughs> Can say Kinsella. Ray. Ray Kinsella, yeah. 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 No. He wasn't Ray. Oh, they're both Ray, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, Ray Liotta played. No, no. Uh, K- Costner was Ray. Yes, too, correct. Wasn't correct. He? Yeah. So it was well, Ray it was and son, Ray. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Junior. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so you were like, you're like, I did something for you. How far do I get into it? You were like, I did something for you. Good. Check the Ross Patterson Revolution. And it's my old acting coach, Dwyer Brown. And he said, you were my Jesse, you're my favorite 
acting student is acting a student as a teenager now that you're older do you want to have a catch with your dad wink and he said <laughs> wink i made him you yeah. said it, you made him say it yeah, and yeah, do yeah. it yeah anyways he looks great I, there was great. a lot of emotions that I was feeling <laughs> and I, all I did was call you and go, cause I have not heard from him or seen him in years. Uh, I, he was my acting coach as well as his wife and they got a divorce and I kind of, you know, chose the wife basically who was my, you know, my main acting coach and forever will be the first person that you know got me into all of this and mentor and everything right so i chose her haven't talked to him since haven't seen him he's only been the guy that left my acting coach right yeah for an acting student that was in my class um so there was a <laughs> lot of emotions coming at me yeah. a how did this happen did you know somebody who knew somebody like it, did he know who he was talking to like did he send this to uh, and then he looks good and then he's like being a little bit creepy and then he left my he's really funny uh i i enjoyed that more than life itself and man. i just called you up and i go and it was on a on, what is this where did you get this? What is this? Like uh, I was on just a like Sunday night. I dropped on a that, that Sunday bomb night. You. you dropped it. So that way you had to rest with it. And uh, I was, yeah. Out and town. you were out of town and I was just like, okay. And I just had to go. <laughs> and it was a lot. It was a lot. <laughs> He's a daddy though. Ah, still. He doing always it. was. Yeah. And that's the problem. He always was. And if, you know, if you're going to leave your wife for a younger girl, like that's where you find him. I mean, we were all in love with him. Yeah. He could have just, right? Oh. First thing I said when I heard about the, you know, cheating, the divorce, whatever, I thought, <sighs> not me. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. So we all were kind of like, well, he made his choice. He did. You know what he I did. mean? He's always been a daddy and he looks great. So looks great. Good for him, but it was very conflict it was a lot of conflicting emotions for me. And you he's what on cameo? Yeah. And yeah, that's yeah. how you Yeah, yeah. Uh we we were we were running through it. I was asked to be on Cameo uh by a bunch of people and then I went to the website and uh and saw it. and there was there's a bunch of celebrities on there. Yeah. And and he was one of them. So so yeah, that you gave me that for uh, Anthony Bourdain Day. No, I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Dwyer Brown, I mean, he's on he's on Instagram. So hang on. So I, I'm I'm gonna play this for the audience. I hit up. I want to give everybody an update. The the meth squirrel. Everybody's talking about the meth squirrel yes. episode. Mickey J. Polk. Uh, not only did I, I find him, obviously live on the show. A bunch of our guests found him, and I, I so I hit him up. And I said, Mickey, I host a show called Ross Patterson Revolution. Love to interview, you about, uh, interview you about your squirrel story. Right. I think it's unfair what the media is doing to you. And I'd love for you to tell your story. Would you be available to do a phone interview? Um, I just got something back. Sounds like he said, I'll call you back. That's he just you just wanna, got it back. I'm gonna check. I never do this. I'm gonna check my phone real quick because I wonder if he if he FaceTime. Did you leave him your number? By the way, the squirrel's name. Did I ever say it? Uh, no. Do you know the squirrel's name? D's nuts. Stop it. I won't stop it, and it's true. <laughs> he just keeps on giving us gifts from above. Oh my gosh, dude. So. You are, Ross is looking at his phone, by the way, for the audio. For the audio of Did it. Did he call you? Did he FaceTime you? Did no. He, no. So okay. He, uh, uh, fuck. I just turned off this option finally. I, of to, people calling you on Messenger. Yes. Yeah. Did you, has this been happening to you as well? It used to. It doesn't anymore. I don't know if either people don't call me anymore or I somehow Whatever, disabled. man. I, I turned it off. So I don't, I, it appears as if he did try to call because there, there is a voice, there is a message. It says it's a voice message and he said, hey, man, I'll try to call you back. Right. If we can get Mickey on the phone for this show, it would be a game changer, I think. For this show? Yeah, because look, I think... 
Kim Kardashian's out freeing prisoners right now. Sure. Um, and she's getting a lot of press for that. Right. I think if we were able to free Mickey in this squirrel sitch that he's involved in. Uh-huh. Um, Gosh, I mean, we we'd could kind of be... be on the same level. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So maybe we can get him on the horn here and kind of rap about life and figure it out. OK. And uh, man, that would be something amazing, wouldn't it? I would love to. I would love to. Just the best. All right, Mickey, we're coming for you. Uh, now it's time to get to the revolutionary figure of the day, shall we, Jabes? We shall. God, it's great that he left some message. Like, I feel like we're this oh, close gosh. to getting a real live crime corner on the show. I know. Wouldn't that be amazing? It'd be the best. It'd be the absolute best. Um, obviously, uh, we're going out to your boy here, Bourdain. So they started this thing called Bourdain Day, Mm -hmm. right? You want to explain it to the audience what it is? Because I had read up on it right before we went on air. And basically what they're doing is encouraging people to go out, travel, do something out of your comfort zone, and maybe share a meal with somebody that you would never in a million years share a meal with or hang out with. Mm -hmm. Uh, Is is that kind of the gist? Because you were like, hey, I really want to go out. Yeah, well, sharing memories. So flooding Instagram with... uh, stories of anthony bourdain and either how he's helped you or what you feel about him or what he's made you know inspired you to do as far as yeah pushing you out of your comfort zone or eating something or just how he he just has such a profound effect i think on people that have never even met him and that's crazy okay and so it's mostly chefs right so there, very rarely is it just a normal person like me that's like, he's everything. Yeah. So it's usually chefs and it's put on by two chefs, Eric Repair and Jose Andre or something, mm-hmm. his two friends. Yeah. And they, you know, started the day and are just making it about good memories and good things about him and, and all of that. That's awesome. Yeah. So um, again, it's mostly chefs. It's not. If we were Everyone. out in New York, I, I, would, I would definitely go out and uh, try some cuisine. Dude, we'd have to go to like his old <sighs> stopping ground and get some heroin and do it. Yeah, you'd have to. You'd have to. You if you really want to. Tie off. You know what I mean? If you, you really want to really keep experience the Bourdain. memory alive. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was thinking about him over the weekend um, being in San Antonio. That was. I had a series of the worst food I've ever had over and over and over again in San it's Antonio rough, where it's dude. just like, it's, it's rough. Here. I'm with this. So you go, you record these audiobooks, and they kind of put you somewhere at a, some, you know, sound studio, wherever. Right. Yeah. We're in San Antonio and uh, the guy was super nice who, who had us at his place and whatever right. they look it's penguins. So they, they rent it out and they pay top dollar. Yeah. Like, yeah. And you know, you, you don't know where it's at. And especially in San Antonio, not a lot of options. So we're at this sound studio and, uh, uh, it was fine. And we, we had lunch, um, you know, and dinner every day and each meal was shockingly worse than the last. Oh yeah. And I believe that 100%. The crazy thing is where Matt lives, He's got a, like a butcher. Okay. Um, it, the best butcher maybe of all time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, so when we got back to Matt's, we were finally able to eat like normal food. But like yeah. throughout the day, Matt and I were like, we're fucking starving. It's the worst food ever. Bourdain is never eaten in San Antonio, I would, I would imagine. Um, um, I'll have to check. He might have done. He's done a lot of places in Texas. I don't know if he's done San Antonio. I will have to check that. Yeah, because oh. if he does, he finds the best places, or he goes to people's houses and they make him like homemade tortillas and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. So and, he he probably has. And so I I will say this because I I talked about them them on the show a, a week ago, two weeks ago about that Super Seedwell company. Yes. That I was a huge fan. Yes. And they, you know they make the, the actually can't wait for that pizza tonight. I know they make those pizzas mm-hmm. and um they're all you know made out of seeds and seed based and there's no carbs and sugars and all that stuff. And the CBD cookies, which are the end all be all jam. Um, anyways, he listened to the show, loved it, and drove personally from Austin to San Antonio to deliver what? the biggest bag full of Seedwell products of all time. And uh, I am unbelievably grateful. So uh, the guy's name is Daniel. Their, their company is uh, Super Seedwell, I believe, dot com. And uh, let me double check that. 
that what? Let me double check. It's superseedwell.com. Superseed life. Am I wrong? Could be, but I want, I want, I want to get it right because, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, uh, yes, it is superseedwell.com. And for real, as far as like, you know, they've got, uh, like brownies, cookies, all that stuff that are sugar free and, uh, no carbs and everything. But they, they taste amazing. Usually all that shit tastes horrific. Yeah. Um, so he listened to the show and was like, man, I can't thank you enough. This was amazing. Drove up from Austin to San Antonio with like a 35 pound bag full of products, all the super seedwell food across the board, which is my favorite, including those pizza crusts. And uh, he just said, look, this is for you and your wife. Take it back to her and, and say thank you very much. And oh uh, super stoked. And again, this is a, a small company. It's just him and his wife who started it, I guess. Yeah. And they're not a sponsor. Uh, like, I really want to make that clear. I'm just a gigantic fan. And uh, if, because we get sent a lot of stuff to the PO box all the time. Um, and if you're out there and you're a small company and you want uh, to send something in, we'll put it on the show. I, we just did it with another product for Drinking Bros as well. Uh, PO box 3793, Wilmington, North Carolina, 28406. If it's awesome, man, we'll shout you out on the show because uh, uh, we gave them a shout out. And then I, I got to have lunch with them for like an hour and a half. And one of the greatest dudes uh, sent me like a fitness plan afterwards. Like, um, yeah, just like one of the nicest human beings of all time. Well, their product's awesome. So it will, I mean, it has to blow up for real. I mean, it's I, I, dude, I've never had anything like it. And again, I'm always been skeptical on the CBD stuff. We we've yes. <laughs> obviously did a fucking show about it. And then I had these cookies and uh, cause it was, we have a mutual friend um, who gave them to me and I was like, bro, I can't take any more C- like this shit doesn't work yeah. for me. Finally can't worked. Can't any more CBD stuff and it it's it the worked. real deal. So he brought me a bunch of those cookies and I was like, "Yo, I appreciate it." So I uh, I'm thankful for that and uh that was cool. That was a very Bourdain moment where, you know, dude, I didn't I didn't know him. Uh they they paired us up. We went to this uh lunch, we went to lunch together at mm-hmm. some Mexican place in San Antonio. Mm-hmm. That place was good. I don't right. know, I don't know the name of it. But uh, that was chosen by someone else and not, Got the, it. not the studio. So uh, that was great. But like, dude, I hung out with this dude for an hour and a half, learned about him, his wife, his life, his product, everything. And uh, it was great. It was great. Um, I know this is Bourdain Day for you, but uh, this was also the 35th anniversary of Prince Purple Rain album. This is the, this is the day it came out. So big fan, big fan. Uh, okay. It kind of sucks that MJ's in there, though. Michael Jackson's okay. in there today. Oh, um, he's not. <laughs> so, if you're listening to this tonight, because uh, this drops in like an hour, I think. Have um, a go get you a bottle of Malbec. Malbec. Go get get a bottle of Malbec Pour a little with bit a friend. Out. Maybe share a meal with somebody that you haven't you, you haven't uh, sat down with in a while or a stranger. Do it for Bourdain Day. I, I like how he's looking right at the computer. Put put him towards camera. Put Bourdain towards camera. There he is. There he is. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. Happy Bourdain Day, people. Good night, everyone. Good night.